So, hi, hello, my friends. Uh, I hope wherever you are, you are all fine. Um, so, I started the, the last session. We went over the um, the the Gok Turks and the um, and the Oguz and the beginning of the Saljuks, and I went through the. Um, the Mamluk uh, sort of uh, dynasties of Egypt, we went through it, right? The Tulunid, the Irshidids, right? I took you to, to the Mam uh, Mamluks. I, I uh, did not deal with one part of it and we will deal with it um, now with, uh, with the continuation of Egypt also. But <clears throat> now I want to continue as I promised you with the Samanids, right? So one of the things that I want you to keep in mind, my friends, is that the period between 800 to uh, 10,000 has been called the period of Iranian intermezzo. Um, and that means that uh, during this time, uh, the Ir Iranian dynasties uh, rose in the east, right? Um, I don't know whether we talked, or yes, we talked about the Safarids and uh, we talked about Tairids, right? So now we get to the Samanis, Iranian intermezzo, meaning that this is a period from 800 to uh, basically 10 hundreds, right? Um, that that Iranian dynasty is ruled, right? So the Samanis are one of the very important ones of this. I mean, Tahirids are important. Tahirids are not Iranian. We don't know what they are, right? Um, but um, probably they are Arab of Arab or origins, but they are totally Iranianized because they're in Khorasan and all of that. Um, uh, so Safarids are Iranian, Tahirids are in the Iranian milieu, right? And then we get to the Samanis, which are very, very important. And if you look at the, the, the territory of the Samanids, you see that it has here, you see that it has all of Tokharistan, right? I.e. Bactria, Kabul, and Herat will be um, under it, right? Um, Bukhara, Samarkand, that is Sogdia, right? And if you look at it, it, it goes to the Macrons, right? Here, it goes to the Macron, their territories. It goes, with, which which means that it, it has control of, um, you know, the um, Arabian Sea and the shipping through there. And it comes even to the, as you see here, to the Persian Gulf, and it has control of that trade route. So it has the control of all the trade routes, right? But it is not for that, that only that, that uh, Samanis are important. Some, with the Samanis, you get a sort of a Persian Renaissance, if you will, right? And they are of... Um, they were of Persian or um, origins. They 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 fed, first of all they maintained still that uh, that uh, that boundaries right that frontier um, with the Turks right. Remember the, all the Ikhshidids and the Tulunids and whatnot that we had discussed were actually uh, mercenaries right. Mamluks who had risen to to uh, to. Uh, so to 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 ruling Egypt, right? And this was not the case in in um, Samanese, first of all. And the Samanese were the ones that were still holding the Turks from mass migration into Iran, right? And they were uh, of uh, Iranian origin, as I told you. They set up a centralized um, government in these parts of Iran. They encouraged trade and manufacturing, of course, right? They patronized learning, they sponsored, they sponsored the spread, peaceful spread of Islam among the, um, uh, among the Turkish, Turkic nomads, and they surrounded themselves, and this is a very important, again, with these Turkish guards, right? With this so-called, quote-unquote, um, um, 
mercenaries, right? Um, but one of the most important dimensions of their um, of their um, of the rule was that they made Persian. Um, the, they changed once again the administration to Persian, right? And and uh, Persian became sort of the lingua franca of the Samanid uh, realm, right? And you see, you know, people in Afghanistan and all of that, and Kabul, right? They're under Persian. I mean, they are they are Iranians, right? The, the Tohadi people, they're Iranians, right? So, um, so, um, so Persian became, and this was quite consequential for the later history of um, of uh, Persian language because from through the Turks then when we will get to the Turks again through the Turks then this Persian was spread up to the Balkans on the one hand and to India uh, and what is now Pakistan on the other right so that if you would go and talk to someone um, uh, you know if you could uh, act you know, if you're, for instance, Turkish, and you can, uh, you, you know that your great-grandfather or great-great-grandfather was a, a literati and knew Persian perfectly, the same with India, right? So later on, the per Persian becomes the lingua franca, and we was, and, and through the Ottomans and, and whatnot, right? Um, so, um, uh, Persian had a revival, right? It became the administrative language. The Samanis also, therefore, um, contributed to the development of Persian literature, art, and bureaucracy. Um, and um, but they they did one thing that we will get to, and that they in that they surrounded themselves with Turkish guards. Right, and we will see that from these Turkish guards again we have another Turkish dynasty, but in, in which is called the Ghaznavi. Then we will get to it, but a Turkish dynasty that is uh, very much actually Persianized, also right. Um, so that was the Ghaznavis, and we'll get. I, I, I think I covered them, but if not, you can read it from the, um, from the, uh, from, from Saunders' book, my friends, right? So, um, so the, uh, the Samanese had this, uh, this territory, and you see this section of this territory, right? I just want you to pay attention here. This is Tavaristan, right? Uh, which is one of the regions of northern Iran, which is very, very lush and has the greatest sort of uh, rainfall during the, uh, during the year, more than any other part of the world, right? And we don't know that about Iran, of course. But okay, um, so, um, so you see that the boundaries, you remember the boundaries were up to here, right? And the, the Samanid dynasties, right? Um, remember that the, 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 the territories that they're taking over is from the partly from the Safarid dynasty and that is what makes the Safarids go to this part and then uh, and then the someone needs to take care of uh, you know they, 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 they don't have control over that uh, any longer they don't have control in on the over uh, the southern part but anyway, uh, so this was the Samanis, but at the same time, I mean, shortly, uh, not shortly, but a century into the Samanis, there rose in uh, Tabaristan area, uh, basically from the city of Rai, here, uh, in Tabaristan, um, you have another Iranian dynasty, the Buyids, coming into the uh, picture, right? So the Buyids, you see, they come and, and the Buyids are a Shiite dynasty, they're an Iranian dynasty, and there's very something very particular about that, them, and in, and yeah, I, I mean, 
what is particular about them is that they are Shiites. And what is also particular about them is that they are the first um, um, people to come and um, take away, um, you know, Mesopotamia also. And, and, uh, and as you see, to go as far as they did, right? Um, but it basically, you just consider this part, right? So they take away uh, the Persian Gulf portion. Well, not really, but a significant section of it, right? Uh, from the Samanis, though the Samanis maintain, if you see a point here, right? So the Buyas come and actually uh, conquer Baghdad and put up a, a, a puppet caliph, right? But although they are Shiites, right? They're not. they 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 are not converting people. They're maintaining their their um, their own Shiism, of course, right? And um and uh, and letting uh, other people in their realm um to 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 live um as they wish right um so um so that is very important that uh, you know in nine forty five if I'm not mistaken and double check it with your readings my friends right in nine 45, they conquer uh, Baghdad, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, so, um, so this is what we have, right, my friend? And uh, this is what we have when we get to the thousands, ten thousands in the Islamic world, right? Uh, you have the Samanids, you have the Buyids, you have the Hamdanids, right? You have Fatimids, and we will get to the Fatimids. They are, they are from the Southerner Shiite draw, uh, rule, and uh, they rule for quite a bit, and they are also very prosperous. And we'll get to them uh, shortly. Um, you have other Sunni ter territories, including the Umayyads, right, and Northwest Africa. The Samanids are Sunni. The Karmatians, uh, Karmatians are uh, also Shiite, and they are kind of rebellious, right, um, against the um, status quo in Baghdad, which is anyway under the Buyids at this point, right. Um, so uh, the Hamdanids are also Shiites, and the Fatimids are Shiites. So around a thousand, right, uh, we get a. a a couple of centuries, right? Excuse me. That in Western Asia and North Africa we get Shiite, excuse me, Shiite dynasties, right? Now then we get to the Ghaznavids, right? And 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 uh, you know, remember that the Samanids had 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 sort of surrounded themselves with with Turkish guards from these Turkish guards rose the Ghaznavids, right? Um, and in um, 962, um, Al-Takin went and captured Ghazna, which is in India, actually. Uh, I'm surprised that I don't have... Well, I mean, it is now in... Nowadays, let's see. Um, we go to our uh, thingy and then... We go and talk about, I mean, we request the map. Oh, sorry. Map. Google. Okay, we go to Google Maps. Continue. Oh, come on, don't take too long. Okay. Okay, I forget it. I cannot do it here, my friends. Uh, uh, please look up Asna 
in your uh, in 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 Google Maps to see where it is, right? It's in Afghanistan right now, right? Uh, and, but of course, it was a Persian Persianized uh, domain, right? Um, because the Samanids had already made made it so, and anyway, this was, uh, you know, Afghanistan, and Pakistan were part of the Iranianized world at this time, right? Um, so uh, they they ra ra rise in nine sixty two, and um, by nine seventy seven they establish. Uh, uh, an independent dynasty and uh, Mahmud of Ghazna is one of the uh, important uh, sort of uh, uh, kings of the uh, of the Ghaznavids right uh, the the Ghaznavids came and took over a large portion of Khorasan from the Samanids right uh, Persian rule disappeared in Khorasan and Transaxiana and the rule of the Turkish princesses took its place, right? Um, and uh, but 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 the administration still remained Persian, right? The bureaucracy remained Persian, right? Um, from now on, actually, from the ten hundreds onwards, um, for most of uh, in most of Western Asia and specifically in Iran. You can you come to have and also in North Africa you come to have um, Turkish dynasties ruling over indigenous indigenous people right I mean uh, in the case of Egypt over Egyptians or e Egypt and Syria over uh, Egyptians and you know Syrians and in the case of Mesopotamia and, and the rest of Iran. Um, also, this will be the case, but and it starts with Mahmud of Ghazna, right? Um, so they allowed Persian officials to run the government. They also protected the trade, and they were Orthodox Sunni Muslims. And in fact, and like all the Turkic dynasties that come after uh, them, they were very. Um, uh, champions of the faith, so to speak. Um, they were very strict uh, uh, Muslims, so to speak, right, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, but, but still, you know, they did not uh, attempt to, um, to, uh, to convert people or, um, or anything, uh, right, so that uh, you in Iran, for instance, and uh, in in uh, um, Central Asia and in Tukharistan, you still have all the population, you know, Iranian and Iranianized populations, right? Uh, so, but one of the things that Mahmoud of Ghazna did is that he laid the foundation of current day sort of Pakistan and uh, Bangladesh, right? Because what it did is that it conquered these parts of the Indian subcontinent, right? And uh, he, he had between 1,000 and 1,030, he led some 17 massive raids into the Indus Valley and the Punjab, right? Um, so and 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 Islamicized. I mean, it, 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 well, I don't know whether they uh, they you have to see what what Sanders says, but I don't think they attempted um, attempted to force convert. They did not force convert, um, but they laid the foundation of an Islamicized uh, sort of uh, uh, Indus Valley and uh, and. Uh, Northwest Indian subcontinent and Northeast, right? Uh, Muslim populations, right? In these parts of the subcontinent, right? Uh, so uh, they therefore made inroads into Indian territories, right? And as I said, there were two consequences of great importance. As you can see, these are the uh, the maps here, right, of 
um, of the Ghaznavid uh, realm, right? They turn the Punjab. Remember, the five rivers come together in order to um, make the Indus Valley, uh, Indus Valley and the Indus River, right? And and that um, Panj in Persian means five, right? Um, and that's where you get Panjab or Punjab, right? Five, uh, five and up means water, five rivers, right? Um, so they turn the Punjab into an, an into an area of Muslim settlement and. Uh, exposed the whole Gangetic plain um, to invasion from the uh, northwest and opened the way the Ghaznavi, especially for uh, the Mongols, right, uh, to come, right, uh, especially the Mongols, right, um, they, the preoccupation of Mahmud and his son with the uh, Indian camp uh, campaigns now let little left uh, little time to check Turkish nomads along the Oxus. Remember, they had been along the Oxus, and the the uh, Samanids themselves were were controlling it, right? But once the Kaznamis that uh, come to uh, come to the scene, right? Um, uh, then um, then uh, they are preoccupied with India and the, the Turkic uh, Oghuz uh, Turks, right, uh, begin to um, make inroads into, uh, into, uh, uh, into the West, right, the, to cross the Oxus and come into the West, right. This is once again the, uh, the Buyids, right, um okay so we we keep the iranian world as is my friends one of the things that i should tell you about the buyids is that they started restarted the title of king of kings they called themselves shah and shah shah and Shah, Shah means king, right? King of kings, right? Shah and Shah. Okay. So that's as far as the Buyid is concerned. So now I want to return back to Egypt, right? And I want to continue the story of um, the Tulunids and then the Ikhshidids later uh, with the Fatimids, right? Um, so the Fatimids, right, um, you see they go from 909 to, um, 1171. Uh, now, um, I remember, uh, I mean, just to go over, uh, the, the things that early Islamic Egypt was a rich country like Egypt was in late antiquity, taxes from the peasants meant, uh, that after the Savad, meaning Mesopotamia, the greatest contributor to the bu budget of the Abbasid Caliphs was actually uh, Egypt under the Umayyads. However, the province was just an appanage of a branch of the Umayyad families, and under the Abbasid, the governors were, were men of only local uh, importance. Um, after the conquest of Egypt, uh, immigration was limited. The Arabs loved the two towns of Fustat uh, that they uh, that that the Fustat had they had created right and and Alexandria, which is from the Hellenistic period. Uh, the Copts, the the Egyptian Christians, right? Most of Egypt, a, a good substantial part of Egypt was Christian, right? Um, and and um. And the Copts, right, were known, uh, the Christian Egyptians were known as the Copts, right? Um, and um, 
so uh, conversion was slow, right? In Egypt, conversion w was slow. Um, the Copts retained their identity. Uh, local administration remained in the hands of local people. And the Arab uh, uh, influence on everyday uh, life for the first, uh, you know, um, what, what, what was, was limited in general, right? Um, um, it was uh, not until the Ikhshidis, uh, I mean, uh, the Tulunis and the Ikhshidis, and that under the circumstances that we uh, argued, right, that uh, Egypt became uh, became um, a political power uh, in the Islamic world in the ninth century, right? But, um, so what is the story of the Fatimids, right? So, you know, we have to go back to our, our uh, sort of story of the Shiites in, 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 in a sense, right? Uh, for extreme Shiites, right, of which the uh, Fatimids, who were extremely tolerant, by the way, right, um, but were they, so-called, they call, they call them extreme Shiites, because they are of the seventer line, right? They're not twelver, they're not imamids, they're not fivers, they're not zaydis, but they are Ismailis, they are the seveners, right? Um, so for them, for all of the Shiites, right, uh, since God spoke through the imams, right, um, and so that replaced uh, imams, Right, what the imams said, it not that they replaced, but but basically were were more important than even what the Quran and the traditions and the consensus of the community has to, has to say. That uh, the imams were a source of truth, right? Remember, because they were they had gnosis, they had knowledge, and they were um, they were connected. Um, to God through the Prophet Muhammad, right? Um, among some of the Shi'is, right, Ali himself was deified, but not among all, all of the uh, Shi'is. But remember that the question of which line of descent through Ali um, was to rule, that was be, that still remained, right? We are in the, uh, in the um, you know, uh, in the 900s, and that still remained an issue, right? Um, so it was from the seveners, from the Ismailis, that the most forceful claim to the caliphate um, was made, right? And as we can see here, okay, okay, this is the way it goes. Remember, my friends, so um, Abu Talib al Abbas and the transfer of uh, of caliphate and all of that and leading to the Abbasid caliphs, right? That was one line, right? That was one line. Then um, Ali uh, from the marriage of Ali and Fatima, um, Hussein and Hassan was were born, right? After Hussein, the line continues to Jafar al Sadiq, right? Uh, Jafar al-Sadiq, he becomes a, one, one of the important sort of uh, people in consolidating um, uh, it, it sort of is Islamic dogma, but most importantly the Shiite dogma. His son was Ismail, but um, before he dies, he, for reasons that I don't know, he, uh, he puts uh, puts uh, Ismail aside and his line continues to Musa al Qasim for the 12 Shiites, right? Until they go to the 12 Shiites, which goes, um, which is the hidden Imam, right? Hidden Imam, Messiah. Right, all of this, right, in spite of what uh, 
what Saunders tells you, right? As I told you before, the whole notion, I mean, I hope I have told you before, the whole notion of, uh, of, uh, of uh, a messiah, right, comes to the, um, comes to, um, comes to the, uh, to the other parts of the world, uh, from the Iranian world, right? But anyway, the the twelve Imam is supposed to re, uh, come at uh, the uh, the um, you know come reappear as the Messiah, right? But the seveners, the Ismailis, right, said no, 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 no. Um, the uh, Ismail was in fact uh, the last Imam. Why was the last Imam? Because um, well, was 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 the last Imam, Ismaili Imam, after whom um, the Imams were connected to to, to the population through agents and through their da'is, right? So Ismaili da'is, right? They they proselytized, right? They proselytized and they said that, you know, the line of Imams um, continues and, they, and, and we still have an Ismaili Imam with the name of Agha Khan that is the, um, that, that is the Imam of the Ismaili community that 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 are very very prosper, pres, prosperous in the modern world and the Agha Khan um, uh, sort of learning establishment that you see online if you if you Google it belongs to the uh, to the Ismailis they pro they promote even today they promote uh, learning they promote uh, they are very 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 successful uh, businessmen among amongst them and uh, and so on and so forth so uh, so they uh, become and and we will see that how the father means become an Ismaili Imam because one of the figures from Yemen who is an Ismaili goes to Egypt and declares himself Imam, right? And uh, gradually they establish the Fatimid dynasty from, from that line, right? Uh, now, but uh, there, there were, uh, right, another, another uh, sort of... Uh, line of of uh, Zaidi Imam, right? They are the uh, like fivers, right? Uh, from Al Hassan, right? And they go from Al Hassan to Zaid, right? Or to Al Hassan Al Musanna, meaning second uh, Hassan to uh, Zaidi Imams of Yemen. This is Zaid. Uh, Zaidi Imams of Tabaristan in northern Iran, from uh, Hassan's son Abdullah, Abdullah al Mahd, you get uh, Muhammad Nafs Zakaria, that it become the Sharifs of Morocco, are from that line, and the Idrisids are actually also from that line, right? So, so. Uh, Uh, okay, um, so it was from these Ismailis that the most forceful claim to the caliphate uh, was uh, was made, right? Uh, and uh, that then we have the seveners, the majority, of course, following the eight Imam, meaning Musa and his descendants, the last of whom was the Mahdi, uh, who disappeared. At Samara at 834, 873, 74, in order to reappear at the end of the world, right? Um, so, okay, so um, uh, the Twelvers therefore, uh, s uh, you know, um, awaited the Mahdi and during this time ceased from political action. Uh, remember the, 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 um, the Buyids, they did not, uh, you know, 
discriminate against the Sunnis or anything like that. In fact, this Shi'i Sunni business has been, uh, from its very inception, right, um, a political um, um, political phenomena um, rising from uh, the rivalry of early Islamic community, quote unquote, Islamic community, right, um, uh, over resources and trade routes, as I told you before. That's what I argue, right? Um, uh, but uh, but the Seveners, that was not the case with the Seveners. They were by no means um, sort of uh, quietists, right? Um, to them, the line of visible imams, visible imams ended with Islami, uh, Ismail, but a series of concealed imams continued to taught the faithful through their agents until the return of the Mahdi. Um, they, the Ismailis, forcefully promoted political action. They sent their da'is, right, to various parts of the world in order to, to um, you know, to, uh, to invite people to the cause of the Ismailis, right? And one of these was Abdullah ibn Maimun, right, who took up these ideas and... Uh, formed a network of Ismaili activities, um, but their history was written nevertheless by their, by their, um, by their enemies, right? The, therefore, this is shrouded in obscurities. Uh, the identity of the Imams from Jafar in six, seven, 765 to Fatimids who, uh, who emerged in North Africa in 909 is not clear. But the Fatimids, okay. So now remember, we are, we are, we, all of this that I have told you, all of this is taking place under the, um, in the period after, in the period that we call the Golden Age of Islam. Wasn't it from the 9th to 11th century, right? Okay, so we have the intermezzo on the one hand, Iranian intermezzo in the east on the one hand, and you have the Fatimids in the, in the west. You, okay, so what do you get? You get the Safaris, you get the Buyids, you get the Samanids, um, you get the Ghaznavids, you get the Fatimids, you know, the Umayyads are, uh, are already in, uh, in Spain, you get the Idrisids and, um, and um, the other, um, the uh, Idrisids and the Sharifs of Morocco, right? Okay, in all this, in all of these realms, from Spain to uh, Transoxiana, right? During this period, major, major cities were created, right? So it was not just the, 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 in Baghdad that all these efforts towards learning and arts and translation and whatnot was taking place, but it was in all the cities that you can uh, I, you can mention you know um, from Fez in in Morocco to Tunis to um, to Cairo which which reached its opulence under the Fatimids and 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 um, and, and, and and was rivaling uh, um, Baghdad right uh, which by 945, remember, uh, is taken over by, by the uh, Buyids, right? Um, so in all of these cities, all of these cities came to vie with each other. Uh, um, they had rivalry with each, other, with each other as to which is the greatest city of quote-unquote, the Islamic world, right? Is it Neshabur? Is it Ray? Is it... 
Um, is it Harat? Is it uh, Samarkand? Is it Bukhara? Is it Cairo? Is it um, Damascus? And on, on and on and on, all right? So it is in this situation during these two, uh, two centuries where Iranian intermittent was also taking place and the Fatimids were in power, right, that the Islamic world uh, sort of flourished, quote-unquote Islamic world, right, flourished. Fatimid wealth was astounding, right? This is a, a treasure that uh, was discovered at... Um, at the Crusader era, in fact, the um, well, one of the re well, uh, Crusader era um, Apollonia, right? Um, they were they they became extremely rich. The gold, their gold, which they got from Ghana in inner Africa and from Nubia, right, um, was the best gold that uh, that you could find and they continued to be the granary of the world around them the Fatimids right um they uh they um uh right they they fed right they fed the population around them right with uh with their agricultural uh productions right um uh Okay, uh, so this, okay, the, the, the native Abu Abdullah in 893, a native of Yemen, went to North Africa to work among the Berber, Berbers, right? And um, he, went, he, he went in such a way, right, to, to, um, to sort of go around the Fatimid realm, Right, and he went to the Berbers of um, Berbers of um, where are we? Um, Kabila uh, mountains. Kabila Kabila people are a, are a Berber people. The indigenous population of North Africa were Berbers, my friends. Right when in seven eleven, remember they went to. Um, to um, to conquer uh, Spain, uh, the majority of the you know Omayyads were the leaders, but the 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 majority of the supporters were actually Berbers, right? So they are a very important part of um, sort of North African population, right? So he went there, right? Uh, uh, to 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 proselytize amongst them, right? He was proclaimed ca caliph, and he took the title of um, Mahdi, right? Uh, and um, and there, right? And uh, the the um, the 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 Kabila pe people. Uh, well, this is according the, to Saunders, if I'm not mistaken. They played. Uh, in North Africa, the same um, part that the Mawali of Khorasan had played in the Abbasid Revolution, right? Um, so, um, Fatimid dynasty uh, was also established, right? Um, and and these uh, Berber communities, of course, this this is also. Um, there was a point of confusion in what I said, my friends. Please correct it in reference to your readings, right? Okay. Um, so the um, Kutama Berbers, which are the same people of uh, Kabil, right, um, were the main force of support for the Fatimis over centuries to come, right? Uh, the Fatimid Empire f uh, flourished, right? They uh, they they founded Cairo, uh, which called they called uh, Al Qahira, three miles to the north of Fustad, uh, and and it was it was a garrison town, right? But it grew, 
right? Uh, it grew. Uh, they 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 created the Al Azhar Mosque, right? Which was again became sort of the a a, a center of learning and 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 uh, sciences in the uh, in in Africa, right? Um, in Egypt, um, under the uh, Fatimids, right? Um, they, 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 their economy flourished, right? And they spend all the money that they obtained from this economy in the service of their own people, something that we do not see even to this day, right? Uh, for, for the most part, I mean, um, anyway. Um, in the end, the Fatimis also were forced to incorporate the Turks into their army, right? And they became also a major force in the Fatimid realms, right? Um, and, uh, okay, so if, if you remember, uh, I have said this over and over again, right? That through the Sinai Peninsula and, and the Sinai Peninsula connects Eastern Mediterranean, right, to Africa. Uh, uh, right to northeast Africa, right? Um, this is the Sinai Peninsula, this little thingy here, right? Um, and whoever has Egypt um, from uh, from actually the New Kingdom onwards, from the beginning of the Iron Age, meaning a thousand BCE, which you have Egypt entering its new kingdom uh, uh, period, right? Um, from then onwards, um, I mean, always, because topography dictates that, but from then onwards, he who had Egypt uh, was interested also in control of Syria, right? Um, I mean, that was the case from the Hittites act actually onward, right? From 1700 uh, onward, 1700 BCE, right? Onward, right? So anyway, uh, so they had, uh, the Fatimids also, they wanted to control Syria. Uh, they started using seaborne uh, fleets for, 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 for that purpose. Their naval activities, uh, um, increased, right? So the coastal towns, the fortunes of the coastal towns under the Fatimids, um, uh, you know, continued to grow in the 11th and 12th centuries. Um, the, 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 the Eastern Mediterranean uh, was becoming the scene of peaceful navigation again. Um, um, if they, they had a fine, they, 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 their economy was the economic prosperity, uh, it has been said, was a miracle, right? Uh, but not just for the state, but for its citizens, right? Um, the ceremonies and the splendor of the court of Cairo, right, um, what was a, um, was a um, contrast to the poverty of the caliphs in Baghdad from 991 to 1030, right? Um, and talented men um, began to sort of immigrate to, to the Fatimids and uh, a lot of Fatimid viziers had Iraqi backgrounds, right? So what else did the Fatimids did? The Fatimids, you see, the Fatimids came to control the blue lines, right? The naval, the naval uh, routes, right? From um, from uh, from Cairo through the Red Sea, which they controlled, right? To East Africa, to uh, to the Persian Gulf, to India, and so on, right? Um, and and um, you know, and and this bubble mandap right, became an important thoroughfare as opposed to the Persian Gulf, right? 
and uh, they they were they were high in they became a center of manufacturing and trade um, one reason was the gold trade of nile from nubia right nubia and ghana were the main sources of gold for the mediterranean and the I islamic world um, and uh, egypt benefited from the influx of precious metals from nubia and uh, and ghana and the uh, dinars of the Fatimis, which we saw here, uh, here were of unrivaled unri worth, so to speak, right? The Indian Ocean trade uh, and the Mediterranean worlds, right? Um, uh, the, the trade between the Mediterranean world and, uh, and, uh, and the Indian Ocean trade routes, right, uh, became, became, uh, became connected to each other through the Fatimids, right, um, the trade with, with Christian Europe, Europe, is beginning to become important at this point, 1000s, 1100s, so give and take, right, um, okay, um, uh, for the first time since antiquity, Right, Western Europe became a market, a significant market for the lo luxury products of the East. Well, that is an uh, that is not really not uh, the case because luxury products of the East continue to come at least to the Eastern Mediterranean. At, at which point they went to um, to the West, and um, but but uh, uh, but but yeah, during the. Um, the Fatimid period, in fact, right, um, the the um, this give and take to between uh, the Western Asia and North Africa and and quote unquote Europe um, was uh, was beginning to get become substantial. Uh, merchants from southern um, Italy, remember that had been conquered, yeah. Uh, they had their own hospices and churches in Jerusalem. Uh, so, is if the Abbasids were the the uh, Abbasid meaning yeah the Abbasid meaning the Abbasids in Cairo uh, in 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 Baghdad right if they were uh, if they were um, sort of. Um, uh, going through a decline uh, nevertheless there was Nishabu there was there were all these other cities right that that uh, that um, were um, were involved in the production of learning and in the production of arts and sciences all over Western Asia and uh, and uh, North African world right so. So now this is the Fatimid of Egypt, right? It it fits into the period they come after the uh, Ikhshidids, right? And they rule for um, the you know few centuries onward, right? Until the um, 1100s, 1200s, until the 1300s, until the, when the Mamluks, right? Remember, until the 1200s, when, when the Mamluks come and they rule for three centuries, right? Uh, uh, but the Mamluks, again, we go, we revert to the um, Turkic, right? The Fatimids were not really um, Turkic as we saw, although the Turks were, were a substantial part of their army, right? But then, with the Mamluks again, we revert to these, um, to these Turkic uh, sort of uh, slave soldiers who become rulers into their own right. Okay, my friends. But the beginning of so remember so we we I wanted to talk about all of this that I have said. All of what I have said was to introduce the coming of the Saljuks, right, 
um, into Western Asia and um, and and uh, and to see what happens as a result of the consequential migration of this Turkmen populations, which were the same Turkic populations that we've been talking about, right, uh, from uh, 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 from the uh, Gokturk onwards, right, um, Turkmen's, right, um, began to mass migrate, right, uh, into Western Asia, right, about nine. Uh, 50, they crossed, right, they crossed Jaxartes. Remember uh, the um, Oxus? Uh, well, we don't have it here. Um, there is Oxus and then there's Jaxartes, right? Two rivers, remember? Um, and they they crossed Jaxartes, right? Um, they moved in and then... Uh, that that was in uh, when was it in uh, nine fifty they crossed it right uh, they 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 became the Sajuks right and they converted to Islam and like all new converts again they were very um, very very um, sort of gung ho uh, if you will they were very enthusiastic about their uh, newly acquired faith right. And they established actually a strict orthodoxy on their, well, in parts of the, the regions that they, they ruled, right? Um, uh, they established um, madrasas, learning centers, schools, madrasa. M-A-D-R-A-S-A, -A, mad madrasas. Uh, meaning schools, right? And that that taught jurisprudence. An orthodox Jewish jurisprudence, right? Okay. So they converted to Islam, and in ten thirty six, right? They and uh, they actually entered, they conquered Marv and they entered the Iranian plateau, right? And they conquered Neshabur. Uh, in 1040, near Marv, they destroyed, um, I mean, yeah, they destroyed the, um, the Ghaznavids, remember, who were also Turkic. They, they rose from the backs of the Samanis as soldiers, right? Um, so they, uh, they routed the Ghaznavis in Dandan, uh, Dandan Khan, and from 1040, right, it's when we have the, um, be, we have the beginning of the Seljuqid Empire. From then on, right, from the Seljuqid period onwards, my friends, most of the ruling population of Western Asia, but only the ruling population of Western Asia, including Iran, right, um, became Turkic, right? Uh, Turkic dynasties that ruled over the indigenous population, in this case, um, uh, uh, the Saljus. In 1071, CE at the Battle of Manzikert Manzikert another f important important you know for world history very important phenomena takes place right and that is the Battle of Manzikert. Here you see the Battle of Manzikert here, right? And 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 the Turkmens, right? The Saljuks win from the Byzantines a prize, 
and that is Anatolia, right? And that is that from then on, Anatolia becomes, um, you know, Turks um, come to settle in Anatolia and they Turkify um, Anatolia, right? This part, right? Okay. But the situation with the Seljuks was that uh, there were many, many um, uh, so, uh, sort of uh, issues that led to the disintegration of their vast empire, right, which is, um, which is this part that they, yeah, into principalities, into dif different principalities. This especially is the case in Anatolia, right, where we get, for instance, the Seljuks of Rome and all these other Turkic dynasties, right, um, which are, um, which are, uh, well, which are Turkic, right. Um, so in, this is their various uh, sort of um, um, wars, right, through which they conquered Anatolia, right. Um, so, uh, so this was the Great Saljuk Empire. This became their protectorate, and um, and this we don't see yet. Okay, but uh, yeah, well, this became Saljuk. Saljuk is this is still Byzantine, right? Until ten seventy one, right? Okay, so. Um, uh, okay, so now we go back to uh, Saljuk's uh, again, but I I want to um, highlight for you that for uh, it is well established that a non a, a great a percentage of the scientists that uh, that grew um, during the um, the golden age of Islam, right, uh, went to Baghdad to study, but they were, I mean, they started their studies in their native worlds, and then they went to Baghdad, some of them went to Baghdad to work, right, to be patronized, but these, these scientists were themselves being patronized by all these other Iranian dynasties that we talked about, right? For instance, Al-Razi, he's coming from Ray, Ray, right? And, and uh, he goes to various um, courts. Uh, Al-Khwarazmi comes from Khwarazm, Khar which is, you know, um, outside of Iran, but in an Iranian ecumeny world, right? In a, in a world that is heavily Iranianized. Um, uh, Farabi, uh, again, he's coming from the areas of, uh, he's, he's coming basically from Khorasan, right? Um, Ibn Haysam is the Arab who went to Basra, to Buyid court, uh, to Cairo of the Fatimids, and so on and, and, and so forth. And then uh, we have Avicenna, also patronized in the Iranian world, right? Uh, and so on and so forth, right? So, so the, the, intermet and the Iranian intermezzo and the golden age of Islam, right, owes quite a bit actually to the Iranian world, right? <laughs> and I'm not saying that because I'm Iranian, my, my friends, but because it's the, it's a matter of fact, right? So anyway, um, so the uh, the Saljuks had two enemies, right? The Byzantines and the Fatimids, right? Um, the the Turkmens came and went into Azerbaijan here, right? Uh, and they made it Turkic. That's how Azerbaijan in Iran and Azerbaijan as an independent state that was created by the powers 
in the 20, uh, 20th century, um, that, they, that, that region became Turkified during that, uh, that um, period. Um, the, in Iran itself, they established a strong centralized state, but they treated the realm as a family property. And this uh, was one of their shortcomings, right? Um, th these family part, they were, you know, the realm was divided amongst the family and they established principalities, right? Um, and they, they, they came to establish um, autonomous uh, princedoms, right? And there was another one. I mean, so there was, there was they, they, they used their family, right? They used their family to, um, to rule, right? Um, they, uh, they paid, the, another thing is that they paid their military officials with iktas. Iktas. Ikta from, uh, well, actually it's ikta, right? Uh, which means a piece, right? A piece of land in this, in this case, right? Uh, from gata'a, that root, Arabic root, to cut off, actually, right? And, and, and so that becomes an ikta, so the, they gave land to these principalities and these principalities can, could collect the, the, the revenues of their lands. Therefore, that revenue did not go to the central government anymore, but it was used where um, it, it, it were used um, um, by the fiefdoms, right? That had been uh, that had been uh, established, right? And so by eleven hundreds, we are told um, the best of the Saljuk uh, uh, days were over, right? Um, after the the defeat, the Byzantine defeat in uh, Manzikert, Greek landlords and officials fled. And the peasants converted, right? Manzikat because they 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 attacked Constantinople and you know the these Turkic principalities, right? The, it 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 uh, it solicited the first uh, crusaders because the um, the Byzantines called for them, right? Um, and they fought against the Fatimis. Uh, who, um, uh, yeah, um, they lost uh, lost Sicily to the Normans, right? Uh, and they all, uh, Turkmen, Saljuk, and Fatimid struggled over the control of Syria, uh, which made it conducive to the Crusaders to come, my friends, and, and, uh, uh, that's it for our uh, lesson uh, on the Sajuks. Uh, what I want you to remember now is that the situation in um, in um, in um, Anatolia, right? In Anatolia, uh, what is the situation in Anatolia? We have Turkic principalities, right? Uh, we have. Uh, you know, Sajuk Sultanate of Rome, right? Uh, we have the Armenians, of course. We have, um, well, the Danish bandits are no longer there because the Sajuks uh, uh, take over, take over their principalities um, also, right? Um, so that's it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this module. I hope you learned and from this module. And uh, the one thing, another thing that I want you to remember is that the Saljuks were responsible for the Persianization of a good part of uh, of uh, Western Asia, right? 
which um, then is picked up by the other uh, Turkic dynasties that come to rule Anatolia and uh, above all the Ottoman, uh, I'm sorry, the Ottoman Turks, with which, uh, with few words about which I will uh, end our sessions later on. Uh, so uh, I bid you farewell, my friends. I hope you have um, happy days and productive days and in the week, in the two weeks that come. I mean, always, actually, of course, of course. And uh, it was a pleasure to... Uh, to um, to talk for you and to teach you so far. <laughs> okay, um, take care my friends. Bye-bye.